Hi everyone! I'm Shelby Goen. I'm an honors student at SFA. My major is early childhood education and I'm doing a documentary on the poverty simulation that the Office of Multicultural Affairs is doing on October 5th, 2018. I will be analyzing their strengths and weaknesses as well as my own biases and seeing other people's perspectives through the interviews I will be conducting. I have already registered for the event and found the description on their website. It says, the poverty simulation is designed to help participants begin to comprehend what it might be like to live in poverty and survive from week to week. Participants will experience some of the daily challenges a family in poverty may endure over a simulated experience of one month. This experience will take two to three hours. This event is brought to you by the East Texas Human Needs Network. So at this point, I've already done some research on poverty and as a child, I would go to the food pantry with my mom. I didn't realize what was going on and never viewed myself or my family as a way I view other people in poverty. I view people living under the poverty line as people who were simply not trying. I thought that people were in poverty because of the choices they made. I thought the kids in school were dirty and smelled because that's how they chose to live, not because they couldn't afford new clothes or they didn't have access to water. But now I understand that it is much harder to get out of poverty than it is to stay out of poverty. I also understand that if you are born in poverty, you are more likely to stay in poverty, while if you are born rich, you are more likely to stay rich. And this is due to the fact that society is set up to benefit those who already have power. And as we all know, money is power. An example of society being set up to benefit those who are above the poverty line are school fundraisers. One fundraiser in my school did was sell cookie dough. If you sold a certain amount of cookie dough, you got to go to Pizza Hut in a limo. Well, typically the student whose family is above the poverty line will purchase most or all of the cookie dough the student needed to sell to get the prize. But the student whose family is not above the poverty line would go around town trying to sell cookie dough, and sometimes they would sell enough and be able to go to Pizza Hut in a limo, and other times they would feel left out. And the last thing you want to do is seclude one of your students. Society is also set up to benefit white people. If you look at the numbers, you will see that only 9% of white people are living under the poverty line, while 20% of Hispanic people are and 22% of the black community are. The number is more than doubled. People living under the poverty line do not choose to have the odds stacked against them. Another bias I had is that the students living in poverty who are not excelling in school are not trying when the reality is that they don't have the resources they need to, at home to excel. While other children have books and educational games, these children may not have access to that because they worry about the things they need to survive before anything else. Their parents are worried about providing their next meal, not their next book. And while other children have their parents to read to them, these children might go home alone because their parents are working shift work or have two jobs and can't be there. I feel like I've already learned a lot and I definitely understand people who are living in poverty now more than I ever have but hopefully through the interviews and the event, I'll learn even more. Hi everyone. Today I'm gonna to be interviewing Dr. Lauren Burrow. She's someone who's been to the simulation before and can tell us more about it. Let's go. All right, can you ex describe your experience and generally what the simulation was like? Sure. So I'm actually familiar with the poverty simulation from other organizations. I was aware of it and had always wanted to do it. So when the OMA here at campus brought it. I was really excited to try it out um, and I gave it as kind of a bonus activity for my students to try the first time. So I attended as well and the basic thing is I would equate it to like playing the game of life, like the board game, but in real time um, and you do. You They set it up with shops and organizations and different places and you were given kind of this role to play. They put you into family groups you get a little bio sketch about who you are, um, your age, um, things about employment status, um, and then they do it, I believe it's 15 minute increments kind of equal a week, so you're going through a month in life. And it's taking care of all those typical responsibilities of bills, um, employment, uh, whether it's finding employment, keeping employment. Um, if you're playing the role of a child, you might be going to school or thinking about after school jobs, uh, learning how to uh, negotiate things and so you visit different booths that represent these different organizations they have volunteers um, and kind of with every choice you make there's kind of this counter uh, reaction that happens so if you choose this this might occur 
Um, and then you also have things that just happen out of the blue. Like you weren't even counting on this and all of a sudden you get hit with this news, which is very realistic to the world. And you have this plan and then you get sideswiped by something. Um, so they have different people you know, kind of poised and ready to interrupt and do something that kind of throws you off your plan or track. Um, the whole thing is happening and there's multiple family groups moving around and negotiating spaces and interacting with each other, interacting with the different volunteer businesses, things like that. Um, and then at the end, there's a debrief where we kind of talk about, okay, what did you just experience? What did you go through? Kind of get those feelings out, but then also kind of match with, so what was the learning? What's the takeaway of going through the simulation? All right, so all we have is $10 and two transportation passes, but our bills for the month are $820. Like you had like you had to send us to do stuff. Even though I'm like thirteen and he was seventeen. It was kinda like like as me as a thirteen year old, even my phone would have never sent me to go like pay mortgage and we had to go do that. I mean, I don't want this to come off wrong, but I guess I would say I'd kind of feel bad just because, like, they can't get what, you know, like, what they need to get, or, uh, like, their living situation forces them to go on welfare, which we already know isn't, like, super great anyway in the first place, so I guess I'd say I feel kind of bad for them, not, like... I don't want to say pity because I feel like that has a negative connotation. So more of like sympathy? Yeah, okay, sympathy. I mean like for anybody, it's like if, they, if, if someone, um, they need help, then I guess uh, they should seek help. Because like, not everyone can do it, you know, just about themselves. Some people do need that. Um, ooh. I personally have never had to experience that, so I don't, I can't particularly say. But, um, I think they would look like any of the rest of us. They just have a different form of, like, income coming in. And I honestly don't know what, like, the specifics about it. Like, um, the government offering assistance to those who can't help themselves. If they're disabled and they can't get out and work, if they physically can't, like, they're sick, stuff like that. Alright, so now I'm just going to go over a few things that stood out to me while making this video. The first thing is that being a single mom is incredibly stressful. I know it was just a simulation, but it was a really good eye-opening experience. The second thing is that someone will always have it worse than you, but that doesn't mean that your problems and struggles don't matter. And the last thing is that um, a lot of students around campus that I talk to um, are not very familiar with welfare for one reason or another, and uh, that about sums it up. Thank you guys for watching.